All right, I'm gonna share with you the rules that made me so successful as an adjuster that I questioned the meaning of work and making money. These rules are what allowed me to go from a broke 28 year old to making a generous six figure income working only about half the year, starting now. All right, some of these rules I picked up on my own during my 20 year career as an adjuster and later as an entrepreneur with Adjuster TV. You know, the first rule is kind of obvious, but I wish somebody had said to me when I was getting started, I wish you all the success that you're prepared to work for. What does that mean? It means that hard work is a fair advantage since anybody can do it. It is a privilege to know this, but it's not unfair. When I was younger after college, I kind of drifted through several video jobs where I just kind of showed up, hopefully on time. It wasn't until I was passed over for a big responsibility on a video production that I was pretty positive I was the most qualified for that my manager at the station explained to me that while I did have plenty of skills, he couldn't rely on me because I hadn't demonstrated that I was willing to do more than just the bare minimum. When I switched to independent insurance claims, this really hit home because I was no longer getting paid just to show up. In order to make any money, I had to close claims and keep closing them day after day. And this is when the light bulb truly went off for me. I realized that I could give myself a raise on my very next paycheck and not wait for a manager or to gain some kind of seniority just by putting in a little bit more effort. It was a real eureka moment for me and it lit a huge fire under me. Which brings me to the second rule and that it's not really work harder, not smarter, nor is it just hard work by itself. It's picking the right thing for you to put your hard work into. No one questions that firefighters, ditch diggers, the trash collectors, and teachers don't work very hard, but they don't make that much money, relatively speaking. Where the smart piece comes in is being smart about how you pick what you do what you choose to work hard on. Back when I worked in television and video production, I really, really enjoyed what I did, but the pay was honestly laughable. You would think that it wouldn't be, but here's the truth. TV stations and production companies, especially the ones I worked for doing shows for Food Network and HGTV, have a mail room that is filled to the rafters with resumes from people wanting to work there every single day. So they pay whatever they want because there's such a high supply of wannabes who want to work on the big famous shows. I was lucky to have that job, but I could be replaced in about a day if I put up a fight about how much I was paid. I love that job though, and I worked very, very, very hard at it. Video production has always been something I've been passionate about. So when I heard about claims and the fact that independent adjusters can get paid per claim, as many as they can do, and make six figures, it only took me a few seconds to put two and two together and realize that I could do insurance work in order to support building my own video production outfit. It didn't quite work out in the way I was thinking, but I did end up with my own video production company. I just make videos for myself instead of clients. I think that's a win-win. Before we jump into the third rule, you need insurance as an adjuster, including E and O. Learn what you need for free at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. The third rule is to start messy. Don't wait until it's perfect to make a move. Most of the time, action begets results, and this is something that I teach my students at Adjuster TV. If you wait until everything is exactly perfect, you know, you've got all the licenses, certifications, trainings, you wait till you got all that stuff to apply to the firms, you're gonna miss the storm season. A messy start as an adjuster means getting the basics down. These are the things that are responsible for 80% of your results, which are key licenses, functional knowledge of estimating software, and a basic grasp of the claims process. Process, right? And then you get your rear out there and you start pounding the pavement. It's simply not possible in any context or scenario to be perfectly prepared for this kind of work, or really, honestly, any meaningful work for that matter. Even 20 years into my career as an independent adjuster, I was learning new things and I had done just about every possible role in claims there was, and I even did roof sales for a season. So yes, you need to be as prepared as possible to give yourself the best chance of success, but so much of this work is learned on the job. And a lot of that is how you want to run your claims business, who you want to work for, what computer you want to use, even what time you want to start your day. You can only figure that out by doing the job. So start messy. You know what's not messy? the Hague Certified Reviewer Certification at hagueeducation.com. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at hagueeducation.com. Which brings us to the fourth rule, which is that this is not a job. 
it's a shot, okay? This kind of claims work isn't a show up and punch a clock kind of a thing. Your resume is important up to a point. Many people with stellar resumes will wash out on their first deployments because they didn't have a framework to help them handle the pressure, and it's no joke. So the truth is that most of the firms don't really care if you have a level three Xactimate certification or you have your WRT or even your CPCU. They only care that you can do the job, that you can close solid claims. And really the only way that they or you is gonna know that you can do it is if you can show that you can do it. You've probably heard it said on social media, things like it's sink or swim or worse, they just throw you to the wolves. But both of those things are absolutely true. So while I said to start messy in rule number three, that doesn't mean that you don't show up without your water wings or your sword and shield to fight those things with, right? Experienced adjusters know that your real resume is how you did on your most recent storm. So when you get the chance to get your hands on some claims assignments, just know that you have to do better than just survive. You need to show that you're adaptable, trainable, and that this kind of work clicks with you. And they're watching. Why? Because there is a significant shortage of good adjusters, okay? Believe it or not. If you can show that you even just have the potential to be good, they'll do what they can to keep you busy and start cultivating you as a resource that they can count on. And rule number five is where the rubber really meets the road. And of all these rules, or really any rules, this one is the most important. You never fail if you don't quit, okay? And here's an example. Back when I was traveling frequently for work, I had a gym membership at home when I lived in Kansas City. When I got storm deployments, I would take a week completely off and then I would go start going back to the gym. And I would do that for a couple of few weeks, two, three, maybe six weeks at the most. And then I would get called to go work again for another five months where I didn't have time to work out. And I repeated this for a few years, but when I got home and went back to that same gym, I noticed that every time I was there, even if I was gone and came back after, after six months, there was this one guy in there working out. At first, I remember thinking that he was just some skinny dude who spent half the time trying to figure out how to use the shoulder press machine, right? But as the months and then years passed, still seeing this dude in there, pretty much every single time I was in there, I noticed that he was getting pretty swole up and was doing a lot more advanced stuff with heavy weights. And I was still doing my basic full body routine and had made zero progress compared to the skinny kid who turned into a jacked gym rat, okay? And all he did is he just kept showing up, right? I credit a big part of my success as an adjuster with the fact that I just keep going when others ask to be released from storms. I almost always was the last person on a storm. Even when I started messy, not knowing a whole lot, I just kept at it. And it wasn't very long before I was making more money than I knew what to do with. And they were calling me to ask if I was available to work, to which I always said yes, of course. Rule number six, you have to care more about people and the work than you do money to be good at this work. I've said on this channel multiple times that the claims industry isn't interested in mercenaries, the most successful adjusters, the ones who become commercial adjusters, the ones who become general adjusters, I firm CEOs even. These are the folks who care about the work and care about people more than just making a great living. I discovered pretty early on that if I sought to be the solution to my IA firm's problems, if I looked for ways to serve them in whatever way made sense, they very often reciprocated with more work and more great assignments. Here's an example. Occasionally, I would get a call from a desperate manager who would tell me that I was the third person that they'd called about this hot garbage claim that was three hours one way from me and it was a reinspection and the insured was furious. And the agent and contractors were involved and that this claim really needed a resolution ASAP, especially since it threatened to jeopardize the I firm's contract with their carrier client. But instead of asking what the pay was, I could get mileage and giving this poor manager a hard time about how they'll owe me if I do this for them, I just said, Send it on over and I'll take care of it, no problem. That's it. The relieved manager sent me the file and I made it a priority to take care of it. Now, it certainly could be argued that I just set a precedent and I'm going to get called first for all the sideways claims nobody else wants, but that didn't actually happen. The thing that did happen was that a few months later, I got a call from this manager while I was between storms and he said that he had a handful of commercial apartment complex hail claims up in Minneapolis sitting on his desk and that I was the first person he thought of to call. And again, of course, I said yes, send him on over, I'll take care of those, no problem. And if you didn't know, apartment complexes are some of the most desirable claims that you can get your hands on, especially if they are hail claims. I made a lot of money that week with that little road trip to Minneapolis. Just remember, 
What goes around comes around. Never forget it. You help other people be successful and they will help you right back. And finally, rule number seven, make your bed. And I promise this isn't something I heard on a Jocko podcast from some college graduation speech. This is practical advice for traveling storm adjusters. Making your bed in the morning does a few things for you that just make your life incredibly easier when you're on a catastrophe deployment. Number one, it's part of good efficiency habits like setting up the coffee maker the night before and always putting your keys and wallet in the same place every time you come back to your room. Number two, at a lot of hotels, you only get housekeeping once a week these days, so you're gonna have to make your bed anyway, again, before you go to bed, and it's a tidy place to flop out and eat dinner tacos while watching TV after you're done working. Number three, and number three, and this is the best reason, a bed makes an outstanding table where you can lay out your printed loss reports to build your schedule, especially if you get new claims. Print them all out and then organize the next few days or a couple of weeks. If you want to know how to get the best start as an independent property claims adjuster, check out this video called How to Start Adjusting Claims, A Beginner's Guide to a Claims adjust your career.